Good morning! In most of my videos, I like to show off how good I am at the drums, but today, I'm gonna be doing the opposite. I'm gonna share all the stuff that I totally sucked at, and how I was able to either practice and figure it out, or fake it until I maked it. Yes. Okay, we're gonna talk about these two rhythms and how much trouble they gave me, but first, if you aren't already subscribed to the channel, make sure you click that subscribe button and also click that like button. And feel free to compose a comment with a long list of stuff that you sucked at. I know you sucked too, okay? Don't act like you didn't. Okay, so it was in the sixth grade concert band where I first was asked to play triplet rhythms. I don't remember being too confused by them until I had to play it in succession with this 16th note rhythm, also known as check pattern number four, these two things back to back confused the crap out of me. And if YouTube was around back then, I would have probably searched for this, found this video, and got even more confused, because this guy is totally wrong. That was a triplet. Yeah, guy, you're playing this. That's not a triplet, all right? This is a triplet. Yeah, that confused the crap out of me, and it took me a really long time to get that exercise down. It was always the check pattern four that was super confusing. I don't think I actually really practiced that one a lot. I just kept screwing it up over and over every single week until I eventually figured it out. Okay, the African bell carol. This was when I was in seventh grade. It was like the seventh grade and eighth grade were combined for concert band. And in this song, there was like this pretty important bongo solo that went on for, I think, 16 bars. Our band director wanted all of the percussionists to play the bongo solo. Now, we didn't have like 10 sets of bongos, so we had like a bunch of different sets of tom-toms, like two snare drum setups, like all these things. Like everybody had to play the bongo part on some kind of two drum setup. And yeah, the solo was like pretty hard. It was like a bunch of 16th note patterns like going all around the two drums. And the band director said, whichever two of us were the best at it, we get to play on the set of big tom-toms. I think it was like a 13 and a 14 inch drum, but they were big to us because we were tiny little seventh and eighth graders. My dad actually bought me a set of bongos to practice this on and I just chopped out on it for hours and eventually figured out the part, went into band class and was nailing it and the band director put me on one of the set of big toms. Yep, I killed it. The Armed Forces Salute is something I played every single year in band class and it's something I still play every year. Oorah, Marine Corps. However, the very first time I had to play it, I got the snare drum part, and I totally sucked at the Air Force themed snare part. So this was in 12-8, and I knew how to count in 12-8 at that point, but every time I played in 12-8 before, it was slow enough that I could play the rolls like this. But as you can hear from the recording, this is a lot faster, and that roll speed isn't gonna work. So every time we played this in band class, I would just get so lost and confused when we got into this section because I didn't know how to count through the rolls. And then as we got close to the concert, the 7th and 8th grade band, we start rehearsing together and I was like, okay, I'm gonna see how the 8th grade snare drummer plays it and I'll just play exactly how he does. But yeah, this dude didn't know how to play it either. There were just two guys totally sucking at this part. And I don't exactly know what happened, but something just clicked at, at some point in this rehearsal and I realized, oh, like, I could just play this as eighth note pulse rolls instead of 16th notes. See, so yeah, I figured that out and I, I didn't really know how to like explain it to the other guy or teach him how to do it. I just kind of knew what I was doing. So we got to the day of the concert. We get on stage, we're about to play the song. Hey, when we get to this part right here, I'm just gonna stop playing. Like, you can just play that by yourself. The summer before ninth grade, this was my first year doing marching band. I made the snare line in my high school. And we had this triplet rolls exercise. It was like a stock regular triplet rolls exercise. However, I pretty much sucked at the last bunch of it. So yeah, that was the part. However, I couldn't really play it. And I didn't know that I couldn't play it because we were just playing it as a line and we learned it all together. And I heard what was going on and I was kind of leaving some things out without really realizing I was. 
I hope that makes sense. So this was going on for a while until we were at band camp actually, and we started going down the line one by one playing the triplet rolls exercise. Yeah, the drum tech actually yelled at the section leader because I didn't know it. But yeah, that night I got with the section leader and it took me like probably like five minutes before I figured out what I was doing wrong. But he helped me and I learned it and we played kind of clean from then on, sort of, not really. Okay, now I was in ninth grade band class and I had to start learning the dreaded mallet melodic percussion instruments. Now, I was actually pretty fortunate to have you know, a band director that actually cared about all the percussionists you know, actually being well-rounded and knowing how to play everything. You know, in middle school and elementary school, we had a little bit of mallet percussion parts, but it was like 90% like snare drum, bass drum, cymbals, like your stock percussion instruments. And for our lessons, we had to figure out these four mallet percussion etudes. At the time, these were insanely hard for me to figure out. I had to go one by one through all the notes, figure out what note it was, and then figure out where that note was on the keyboard. Yeah, it was just a painstaking and really annoying process. We had like a month to learn this. I remember I spent so much time learning the very first one. Like I memorized it, I played it perfect, and then I just totally sucked at the last three. Like I, I just didn't have the time to figure them out. But the band director could tell I tried and he gave me an A for effort. Yeah. Oh my goodness, the story of my first hurt to ever. Oh, I bet I was really great at them. Actually, I wasn't. I couldn't even play them. Sort of. So this was freshman year of indoor, I was on tenors, it was my first year on the tenors, and we were learning the very, very end of this show. Now, the tempo of this show was insane, especially for an A-class group, 240 beats per minute. And then we were kind of learning the end of the show by rote, and we get to the very, very last bar, and our tech just says, hey, let's just make it two hertzes, and then triple it one. Now, I was actually the only freshman that was in the upper battery, like the snares or the tenors, so they came up to me to see if I could do it, because I knew the other guys could. So Tech played it on one drum, and then I played it back on one drum. Yay, I could do it. But then, <laughs> but then. Obviously, you're playing tenors, you can't just have the whole thing on one drum, so he's like, hey, do this around. And, <laughs> yeah, I couldn't really do that. I ended up just playing this. And nobody seemed to notice that I wasn't playing it correctly. So the difference between these is what was written is a herta, and what I actually played is called a candy apple. And the herta is all alternating sticking, the candy apple is double stroke sticking. And because the sticking is different, that makes the arounds a little bit different. And honestly, the candy apple is quite a bit harder than the herta, especially with that around. So I don't really know why I could play that, but not this. But can you tell that I faked it in this low quality recording? How about now when it's slowed down to 50%? Compose a comment and call me out. My junior year of high school, this is my first year that I made the all-state band in New Jersey. One of the pieces we got was Armenian dances. Now this thing, it wasn't really that hard. Like I got the bass drum part and almost the whole song, it was just on beat one and four in five eight, which you know, doesn't seem that bad. But when you're doing this crap for like 15 minutes, it got really, really difficult to just stay focused and not get lost. Like concert band repetitive percussion parts, they are the worst. And I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate to me on that. It is so hard to not get lost in the sauce. This was like 300 measures that I was just playing on beat one and four with the occasional beat one and three, which I would usually mess up because I got lost. And yeah, I think it took me like two or three whole rehearsals on this piece before I kind of felt comfortable with it enough to not get super lost. I think I just ended up like just listening and figuring out what was going on right before I had to stop playing this really repetitive part and I'll just keep playing it until that point. That's probably the best way to do it, just kind of analyze the piece, figure out what's going on, and try not to get lost. Okay, for these last couple ones, I'm gonna go deep into the analysis of each of these. So first, we got United Percussion 2008. Now, by the time I started marching WGI and DCI, there wasn't really that many parts that I just straight up couldn't play. Like, obviously I had to practice some stuff, but there's only a few things that were just insanely difficult for me and that I had to fake or figure out. One of them was in this show. Okay. 
Okay, so what made that segment specifically difficult was these floppy alternating flams right here. Now slightly to the left of your screen is the tenors doing our around and it might be a better thing that this got cut out of the DVD. Actually, maybe whoever was editing this realized I was faking the around and decided to not show the tenor line for this part. I don't know, but yeah, this around was insane. And here's what I ended up playing. So here's the two parts, and the difference is that I just straight up took out all of the flams in the last beat. But I was able to find a different video of this show where you can see the tenors during this part. Can you tell that I'm faking it? How about now, slow down to 50%. Pose another comment and call me out. You won't do it. You won't call me out on this 12 years later. You won't. So these next things that I totally sucked at involved not playing. It was staging issues that caused a huge problem all the time and I totally, totally sucked at it. Okay, so first we're gonna watch a video from United Percussion 2010. I had this insane, insane solo. I'm probably gonna have to make a whole video breaking this one down. I remember all the good times. Okay, so, yeah, crazy stuff, I know. So what made this so difficult was I started all the way in the back corner. Now this would've been fine if I was the first one to play, but the front ensemble played for quite a while before I had to come in with them. Now if you don't know why this is difficult, you know, the way that sound travels, if I play something here, then the person that hears it way across the room is gonna play with me, but it'll be a little bit later after me. So if I start playing with what I hear the front ensemble doing, their sound's gonna come back to me, I'm gonna play and be super late getting the sound up to the judges in the audience. There's actually a really good Bill Bachman video where he breaks down this concept. I will leave that link in the description if you're curious. However, there's a little bit of a hack here. So the person that controls the tempo for the front ensemble the majority of the time would be the drum set player. So right before I came in, you can see the drum set player. She's looking back at me and kind of like nodding her head where the downbeat is. And I would just totally tune out what I was hearing and just go with what I was seeing her do and then come in and I was in time. But even still, that took a whole lot of rehearsing and figuring out to get that right. However, that hack is not always able to work, such as in this video, United 2009, the year before that. All right, this was leading up into the tenor feature. This one was actually really, really cool and pretty hard. Not just a bunch of putters. <laughs> So clean, so good. Okay, let's back up here for a second. We're gonna talk about the entrance of this because this was kind of a disaster for a really long time. Okay, so the bass drums just finished their feature. It was all well and dandy. And then the front ensemble gets a little feature here as the tenor line is marching through the back while facing backfield. We turn around and bam, we play. Now this was so hard. Unlike 2010, we weren't able to like see the front ensemble giving the pulse for us. We could only hear what was coming from the front back to us, probably echoing off the walls, and then we would play. I remember trying to time the duts with the entrance. I had to feel like we were coming in like almost an eighth note early because of the sound delay coming back and then back up. It was, it was weird and kind of terrifying every time, but this rep was really good. The finals rep was really good. That's all that really matters. You just have to have a good finals rep, people. Okay, I got one more staging nightmare for you guys. This is totally not Carolina Crown 2010. I think this is some kind of cooking video. Could be anything. So, okay, this was the second of, I think, like three or four drum features we had, and let's watch this, and I'll explain why this totally sucked also.
Okay, so that was really, really clean and really, really good. However, it was not always that way, and I'm gonna explain what caused a lot of problems. So during this part of the drum feature, we had like a side-to-side -side feature moment. The snares went first, then the tenors went first, then the snares went again, then the tenors went again. So you can see, from this form here, the snares over here on the 40-yard line, tenors all the way over here on the other 40-yard line. This was a nightmare, and it was actually watered down from the original. The original drill, I think, had us on the 30s. So anyone who's ever marched in DCI, and probably even in marching band, you know never to listen to the front ensemble because the sound delay coming up. That's especially if you're like all the way on the back of the field. I mean, we're pretty close to the front sideline, but even still, it's not close enough to listen to the front ensemble. So the snares come in first, and they would just be right with the drum major's hands. But this second tenor entrance, the snares are entirely too far away for us to listen to. I think they're actually further away than the front ensemble is. I remember it was like super weird just listening because we were close enough to kind of hear this side of the front ensemble and then the snares sounded really late to what that was and then the drum major's hands were just kind of ahead of everything. So once again, I just kind of had to tune out everything I was listening to and just dot right with the drum major and hope that everything was perfectly in time and consistent. And then for the second set of features, we were a lot closer together. The snares were on the 45 and we're on the 45. So instead of being 20 yards apart, we're now 10 yards apart. That's almost close enough to be able to listen to each other in reference tempo that way. But yeah, we just had to rehearse the crap out of this part, like all the time, all summer long. And as you can see by the not finals DVD, we ended up figuring it out and getting it clean. Okay, and the last story of something that I remember sucking at was also Carolina Crown in 2010. This was in the winter camps. We were just getting the music for the second movement, the drum feature, and it had all these paradiddles and paradiddle diddles in it. The tempo was 120 and they were 30 second notes. Now, if you don't know this already, that's really, really fast to be playing paradiddles. Woohoo! Gotta warm up. Hold on, hold on. I think the, the pad's not high enough, that, that's what the problem is. <laughs> I barely make it through that now. Yeah, that crap was really hard, and we worked on that for hours and hours and hours every single camp, and then when we moved in, we did it hours and hours every single day, and eventually we were getting up there, almost had it clean, and then our entire show, we had to rewrite it because of copyright. So all of that got cut and we didn't end up playing that. Okay, so that's all the things I ever sucked at. <laughs> at least the ones that are, you know, worth mentioning in this video. But remember to compose some comments with things that you sucked at. I'm very interested to hear it. Also, don't forget to click that subscribe button and ring that liberty bell and click that like button. And also consider buying a custom t-shirt such as this one. I will leave that link in the description. And have a good morning.